What's going on guys? Today we're going to be going over the complete Amazon FBA product research process and we're going to be going through every single thing step by step. Now, the way I like to do product research, what has worked for me and with how everything's gone with Amazon, all the new changes and different things. And if you guys don't know about everything happening with Amazon, my last video went over that and all the recent changes and how Amazon has really changed. But as far as product research, there's really a three step process with smaller steps in between that I like to do. Now, before I jump on my computer, show you guys step by step the entire process, the three steps I like to do, first one is called product discovery. Now this is just how you're going to get an idea for initial product. How are you finding initial products to then go and analyze, run numbers off of, and so on. So product discovery, any way you discover a product. And I'll show you this. Step number two is product qualification. This is just a quick little step in between that you look at a couple factors that will either tell you, yes, this product has potential or no, move on. And this is to really save you time in product research. And step three is product analysis, which is just you going in and looking at all the smaller little details to see, okay, is this a good product? It looks good on surface. Is it actually one I should move forward with, continue? Does it have that potential? So. Those are the three steps. Now I'm going to jump onto my computer now and show you the entire process. Now to do product research, there's going to be a tool that I'm going to be using. Now this tool is called AMZ Scout. I'll leave a link to it in the description. Now what this tool does is twofold. It helps us with that product discovery. It'll help us with the product qualification and the product analysis. So it helps us with all three steps and there's other little tools that this company has inside that you can go and use for other things like creating your listing other things in the future but we're not going to use those for right now now i know there's a lot of different tools on the market and they all kind of do the same thing but this one has a couple different features that i really like using it just makes the process a lot easier and it streamlines a lot better because all the tools are there and they're easy to use and you'll see when we go through the process so this tool that i'm using amz scout we're going to use two different things first thing we're going to use is their web app or product discovery. And the next thing we're gonna do is their Chrome extension, which will help us analyze those products. So have the Chrome extension installed already. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go over to their product database and I'm gonna start the product discovery process. So like I said, product discovery is how you're going to initially find the products to then go and analyze. So how can you do this? You can do this by thinking of products in your head, which is probably the worst way possible. You've probably heard people say the touch method where you write down everything you touch. I personally hate that because it doesn't really do that much and it's a waste of time. Or you can use something like this where there's a product database on Amazon. So if I go over to product database here, it pulls up every product on Amazon that meets a certain criteria that I set. Now, an example of this would be, you can see there's different things up here. So I could say, I want all products in the home and kitchen category to show up and then I can filter this out more. So this is how we're going to filter our initial products and this is how we're gonna do product discovery. So the way I personally like to do this, so you have your categories, you can go through all of them at once, you can go through one at a time because there's a lot of products, I personally like to do one at a time. And you have to set certain factors. So first thing is price. Now with Amazon, there's fees, you have to purchase the product and there's different things associated with it. So. For price, I personally don't like to do anything lower than 12. I actually stick with usually 15 or $20 and above for the higher price range. But if you have a lower budget, you can start a little lower. But anything under $12, you're really not gonna make over $5 a unit, if that. So price, I normally like to do 12 to $50. Reviews, so reviews on Amazon are how you're gauging competition. If you're going up against someone who has a thousand reviews and you have two reviews, Usually people are gonna pick the one that has a thousand reviews if all other factors are equal. So the lower the reviews, usually the less the competition. So I'm not gonna set, actually I will set a minimum here. I don't wanna see products with zero reviews because sometimes it'll pull up data that you don't want. So I'll set this at three reviews and then the max we'll just put at 50 for now. And estimated sales. So how many sales a month is this product getting? Now I want my minimum here to be, we'll say 250 sales and maximum. I'm not going to set a maximum. I don't care if it's selling a lot and I can click here and I can go into more filters if I want to, but that's all I'm going to do for right now. I'm going to click find products and it'll bring up everything 
that is in the home and kitchen category between 12 and $50 with three to 50 reviews that get over 250 sales per month. So every product on Amazon that meets that is now pulled up here. So this is the product discovery phase. What I'd go through is I'd look at this product and I'd say, okay, these are all single products that meet a certain criteria that I want that have potential sell on Amazon. However, I wanna make sure that I am finding not just one product, I don't care if one product meets that criteria, I wanna find an entire product market because my goal, for example, let's say I want to sell, let's find something easy. We'll just say this little like hydro flask. Well, while this single hydro flask is selling 17,000 units a month and it only has, where are the reviews? And it only has 29 reviews, that could be just that product not the entire product market. So if I went over and I typed in something like hydro flask or water bottle, you can see all these listings and this is where the next step would come in, the qualification. So I'd click this AMZ Scout Chrome extension up here. And what it does is it's gonna pull all the data for all the listings on this Amazon page. So the sales, the reviews and et cetera. So I can see if the product market is good because my whole goal is to rank my product on the first page to get those organic sales. If I'm ranked on page 20, I'm probably not gonna get any sales. So what I wanna really make sure is that I can rank this product. And if they have tons of sales and tons of reviews, it's gonna be extremely difficult or extremely expensive to rank that product. So product discovery would be just taking these products here. This is the product discovery phase. Next is the qualification. So. This is where you can go through and you can find different products and you can say, okay, let's look at the market as a whole. So main things we're gonna look at are for the qualification, again, this should be very quick, is sales, reviews, and that's it, and the price. So first thing, the way I normally like to gauge this is I wanna see, I'll normally look at the top 12 to 15 listings and I wanna see the majority of them meet my criteria. So under 100 reviews, over 250 sales a month or 200 sales. And again, and it, it will change depending on what your goal is and what you're trying to reach. But the whole goal here is to make sure you can rank on that first page for whatever this product is. So first thing I'm gonna look at is I'm gonna go over and you can see the estimated sales here. And this is monthly. Again, this is an insanely popular product. That's why it's selling 14,000 units, 11,000. So let's say I'm gonna take these top, we'll just say 10 listings right now. Let's see if they meet 250 sales. Yep, they're all over about 10,000 except for this one product here. So that passes. Are the reviews under 100? No, 1,000, 9,000, 100, 9,000, 1,000. So very competitive product. That automatically disqualifies that product. So I'm out of this product and I'd go back to the product discovery phase here. So I'd say, okay, that's that product. Let me go through and I'll look at a different one. So what's this? A milk frothing tool. And one of the cool things with this tool here, which you won't see with other ones, is you can see the product's price history and you can see their rank history when you click these and it'll bring up the chart. So you can see if a product is brand new and just started selling and that's why it has a ton of sales. If they did a giveaway, those show as sales as well. And you can see the fees for selling this product. So you can see your profit margin before you would buy the product. So you would still have to subtract the cost of actually purchasing the product. And to make it super simple, you can literally press this, say, okay, let's say this product cost me $4 to purchase, ship to Amazon and everything. You can see what your total fees are and what your total estimated revenue per unit is. And with how many this is selling, it multiplies it and that would be your revenue. So those are kind of the little tools that just make this a lot easier to streamline this process. So back to product discovery, product discovery, milk frother. So I'd go over to Amazon again, make sure you're in all departments here. If you're in a different one, it won't show all the products for that if they're in different categories. So it can make it look less competitive. So milk frother, I'm going to search this and you can see, I think that is the product we just saw. I'm gonna go over and do a quick product qualification check using the Chrome extension here. And again, it's gonna pull up all the products and you wanna make sure you're not sorting these because you can sort these by different things, but we wanna leave their organic rank and we wanna make sure we don't have any sponsored listings on there. So sponsored listings are just listings that are paying to show up at the very top. So we ignore those completely. 
So we can see we have our first product here. Let's look at the qualification for this. So first thing, sales, a lot of sales in the thousands. So that passes for kind of our top listings. The majority are over what our goal is, which is 250. Reviews, again, in the thousands, it's too competitive. So we would move on to the next thing. And you would do this process, again, once you get going, you get ideas of what sells too much, uh, what would be too competitive, what won't get sales, or what you can't really private label. And you get an idea, like I would never look at bedding or chairs, things of that nature, hydro flasks. But you get an idea, and this is how you would do product discovery. You can go through this using the web app. You can even play with different filters. And there's different strategies you can use, like looking at things with bad ratings. You can look at something that has decent reviews and good sales, meets everything else, and you can say, I want their average rating to be under three stars. So they're still selling their product, they're selling well, but they have bad ratings. So if I could come in and fix the problem with that product, I could capture more sales and market it that way. So that is kind of the product discovery. Now I'm gonna use a different product that looks decent just to show you what the numbers actually look like. So if I go over to something called a taco holder, now this might be slightly competitive now because it has been a good product for a decent amount of time. Please don't sell this. So we can see it's gonna pull up all the products here and we're gonna do our quick qualification. So we're gonna say, all right, sales. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. 14 of the top 15 listings are over our sales threshold. And then we're gonna go over the reviews. So we have one, two that are over, but we have one, two, three, four in a row that are under 100 reviews. Then we got a couple over and about that. So it looks a little competitive with the reviews. Reviews are a little higher than I like to see. This could be difficult to rank for, but we're gonna pretend this is okay. We're gonna move forward. Now we need to look at the price, make sure there is enough margin. I want it to be over $12 on average. So we can see our average price up here, 1558. Again, I like looking at the top couple listings because this takes everything on this page. But with that being said, looks like the majority of them, except for maybe two, three listings here, are under $12. So let's move into the next step, which would be product analysis. So this is where we're gonna dive deeper. We need to look at other things. So we know the reviews are fine. We know the sales are good. The price is good. Those are kind of the main kind of make or break factors. Now let's dive deeper. We need to look at other things. So let's say, okay, we're gonna move forward with a taco holder. One of the things you need to think about is how are you gonna differentiate your product? So, okay, yeah, this product, let's see, there's different variations. This one comes with a four pack. So different quantities, different sizes or colors different variations of products. So you can see some are plastic, some are metal, some come in a set of six, some cut, come in four or two, and there's different styles. There's dinosaur ones, some hold more tacos. So how, which one of these am I gonna go with and how can I differentiate myself? So how can I stand out? You can see all of these listings look almost the same. Is anyone offering anything different? So let's see if anyone does. So with this example, they are adding a little spatula here, not spatula, tongs. So that could be a way you can differentiate. You can add something or bundle something. You can add an extra or free item in there and you can add different features. There's different things. So differentiation would be one of the things I'd really think about. Another thing would be how much is this product going to cost? So what I'm gonna do is make sure this product is profitable. So I'm gonna go over to Alibaba, which is where you source products. This is probably the biggest place, not probably, this is the biggest place to source products. So what I type in is I type in whatever my product is. So taco stand, taco holder, and maybe that's not the right word. We'll try taco holder. And I look at kind of what the average prices are here. Now again, you're gonna be able to negotiate and it will depend on how many pieces you order. But for the sake of this, we'll say, okay, 80 cents to $1.40 a piece, $1.40, $1.20, $1.40. So we'll say it's a dollar a piece. Okay, we'll say about a dollar a piece. And if that's a single and we wanna sell a pack of four, we gonna multiply that by four. So it's gonna be $4 a unit and then shipping, we'll just estimate about $2 there. So it's gonna cost us $6, we'll say, for our product for us to purchase our products, get it into Amazon and shipping and everything else. So what you can do here, 
So if I go back to the Chrome extension here and I click on one of the products that is similar, so let's say I want a four piece one. So the one that is Amazon's choice is this four piece, so four pack. If I click on the FBA fees here, you can see how much the FBA fees are. So they're selling this product for $20, so $19.95, we'll leave that. We have said our product cost is $6, so this is $6 here. Additional cost per unit, we leave these blank. Now, what this does is this will pull information directly from Amazon, so the size and the weight of the product, and it'll tell you what the fees are for Amazon. So we can see this product for a four pack is about two pounds, and this is the dimensions of it. And we can see all our Amazon fees broken down. So we can see it's $5 for FBA fees, and the referral fee is $2.99 for selling at $20. So that means with all these factored in, our price point, this and this, our profit per unit would be $5.51 per unit we sold in total. So that is a smaller profit margin, but it is a cheaper product. I wanna see at least $5 plus. I normally shoot for 10. So we can see this would be $5. So that's something to take into your product analysis. So you say, okay, about $5 profit per unit. It's not terrible. We can move forward. And then you can go and look at different things like the seasonality of the product, if it's patented. So again, with AMZ Scout, you can see the history of this niche and you can see the search volume and just how well kind of the sales are over time. So you can see about a year ago, so 2019 here, what the average sales were and the average price and how it goes over time and how it spikes here. And then it came, started to come down and move on and you want to make sure this isn't a seasonal product where you'd have sales in the summer and then it goes down in winter all the way until summer and then it spikes you just want to make sure it's relatively normal and this product is relatively normal it drops in winter which tacos you're probably less popular when it's cold outside and then it spikes up again but nothing major that's small so this would look fine with that so that's kind of the product analysis stage as well You'd go through, you'd look at all these little factors and make sure everything is there. The differentiation, your product costs, your profit, seasonality, if the product is patented, and so on. And there's a lot of different factors you can look at. So that's kind of how I would go through the entire product research phases, which again, product discovery, just how you're finding that product and using the database is the easiest way. Product qualification, so quickly looking at the three factors, sales, reviews, price, and then product analysis, all the smaller things, differentiation, your profit, patents, so on. So that is kind of the entire Amazon product research process. I'll leave a link in the description to this tool if you guys are interested in it. So that is all for this video. If you guys enjoyed this, drop a like. Let me know in the comments what videos you guys want to see next. And I'll see you guys soon.